Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit more on influencers and the changes that fanatics are hoping to bring to the hobby in the next few years. And the last week or so, you would have heard me talk about this news coming out with you know stipulations that they're placing in on card stores, i.e. saying what they can and can't do with the product, what they can and can't do when it comes to breaking, what they can and can't do when they want to sell those things. But also a really interesting point that not many people talk to was you know the rules in place that you know fanatics put in around you know reporting on data and sales and all that sort of information and also social media metrics of each of these card stores now lots of people were concerned about this because it indicated that maybe some card stores you know lose allocation if they weren't performing or if they weren't having much of an impact on social media now i've already shared my thoughts on that in that previous video but the thing i want to focus in on today is what sort of impact this would have on content creators now part of the reason for this channel to be you know somewhat successful over the last few years is you know my ability to call things out and not you know not be compromised when it comes to sponsors sort of dictating what I can and can't say and one of the things that sort of come to light over this period as well is you know the number of people that are putting out content that are you know essentially lying to you as viewers that are misconceiving the truth they're sort of you know shifting things around um, to basically take advantage of you as, as a collector as a viewer they're either funneling you into products that they don't trust themselves, but they're doing it because they're getting paid, or they're doing it because they have some other underlying benefit associated with it as well, or just because they don't care. Now, that sort of stuff is, is no surprise. It's why the likes of AOH Sports has become successful. It's why the likes of Sports Card Radio blew up as well over this two-year period, because people started to get sick of this thing. Now, I know this video won't be specifically about cards itself, but the things I want to talk to today you know, are going to impact you in some capacity and more importantly, impact these content creators, these influencers, you know, a lot more than what they think. Now, at the top of the video, you would have heard me talk about, you know, the fact that, you know, Fanatics has put in place social media metrics and all those kinds of requirements on these card stores. And not many people are talking about the fact that this is also likely going to become applicable in some capacity to some of these individuals they're hiring to sort of spruik their products and talk up their business, right? Some of these paid for influencers. And that should honestly scare a lot of these guys and girls because, you know, one thing we've seen over the last few years is how many of these guys have been given platforms despite not necessarily having the biggest following or engagement. And it's happened with quite a few people and seems to be a bit of a good old boys network, right, as we often talk to on this channel. Um, and it doesn't always make sense. You've got people going on live streams for certain auction houses, as an example, and only having 10, 15 people, you know, watching their streams. Nobody's really commenting or anything like that. And then you start to ask questions around whether or not they've paid for, you know, their own subscribers, their own followers, because some of these channels are quite dead in that regard. And you sit back and say, well, what are these sponsors actually doing, giving money to these people? How much reach do they actually have? Things don't make sense. Now, I want to clarify, I'm not saying this from a jealousy perspective or anything like that, because at the end of the day, I don't really care about sponsorship or anything. I have a day job that pays me very, very well. The reason why I'm talking to this is, you know, we've already had questions and concerns around what these influencers put towards us, you know, in terms of product pushing and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, so many people have seen this and, and gotten quite sick of it. And we've, you know, flagged probably dozens, if not close to hundreds, I want to say at least a hundred instances between the three of our channels of certain individuals sort of doing things from an influencer perspective that um, seems very suspect. And one thing, one thing I also talk about when it comes to these guys is, you know, they're often putting out you know low effort content and i think a lot of people have, have talked to this recently as well the general consensus here is you know if they take that same approach right and they take that same mentality but have sort of been taking these sponsorships for granted they've been taking you as a viewer for granted which means now in turn you know their engagement is quite poor and it's like this yourself you can you can go check some of these channels that you know are pretty big maybe have 10 15 20 30 thousand subscribers but they don't really get that many comments their instagram following is also quite poor they don't really get much engagement because they've sort of, you know, taken you for granted off the back of the boom, i.e. they're getting paid so much money, you know, they've basically, you know, made their money from sponsorships, they've made their money from ad revenue, they don't really care about putting in the effort. You know, Fanatics Overnight could flick the switch like they've done with card stores and say, okay, you want money from me as a business, show me what you're bringing, what value are you bringing to me? And for most of these guys, I don't think they're going to have it. And I'm not trying to poke fun at them or anything like that, but I just think that's something we need to sort of keep front of mind because, you know, someone like AOH Sports, you know, also talked to this today. And given the fact that you've got so many of these individuals already paid for and bought for, he essentially talks to in this video, the fact that no one's really going to hold Fanatics accountable because they're too scared to lose that revenue. 
So it sort of goes twofold. You're going to have people that are bought by fanatics that are too scared to talk up, or you're going to have people that are so desperate for this sponsorship because everything else has fallen away. Their engagement is quite poor. They're not getting many views anymore, all that sort of stuff. So they're going to do whatever they can to try and impress fanatics. So nobody's really going to call out any of this negative behavior or try and hold fanatics accountable. You've got those, those two streams essentially, right? People on one fence being paid by fanatics and the other fence, people wanting to get paid by fanatics. And that's going to encompass a, a bunch of different people, in my opinion. And it, it's going to, once again, circumvent you know, information getting to you. It's going to, once again, dictate and manipulate the information that's being presented to you as individuals. Who can you sort of trust in that specific instance? And it's something that we should be you know, very, very cautious of. Um, one thing I also do want to flag is, well, some of you guys might say, well, you know, in the past, how much money were these guys truly making with some of these sponsorships, even though they have small channels? You know, I have confirmed with a few people, right? And this is straight from the horse's mouth. Certain channels that had maybe less than 5,000 subscribers, sometimes maybe more, um, not many followers on Instagram, very little engagement, live streams only getting 10, 20, 30 people in there at a time, very little comments. You know, these channels are making well over, you know, $100,000 USD. That's insane. Like, that's honestly insane. So when you think about that kind of money and what these guys are going to be trying to chase to get from Fanatics, right? Because Fanatics is now the be or end of the hobby. What do, what do you think is going to happen when it comes to them, you know, presenting the truth to you as an individual, not manipulating information to you as an individual? Their pockets mean more to them than they do to you and I, unfortunately. And um, general consensus I want to give on this, similar to what Raul said in his video, you need to sort of trust where the information is coming from. And I'm not saying this from my channel's perspective or anything like that. I'm just saying... Keep this stuff front of mind when you're seeing this sort of thing and make up your own mind, right? Because, you know, we've sort of seen in the last, you know, maybe six months that other individuals have sort of seen the success of this, you know, watchdog bloodhound content and have started doing it themselves. The thing I want, again, for you guys to keep front of mind is remember where this information sort of came from in the first place because, you know, the people that are telling you this now might win your faith, might win your trust, and you can watch them all you want. I'm not saying don't watch them. But if you go to them trusting that they're going to present you this kind of information all the time when they've not done it in the past, what makes you think they're going to do it in the future, right? That's the thing you sort of need to keep front of mind. This wasn't meant to be a hating video or anything like that. I just thought it was pretty interesting how, you know, in the past, people were basically given sponsorships without the effort, high reward, low effort. Basically, the boom stipulated that and dictated that because guys got huge followings without putting in literally any effort, right? Just filming themselves on a camera. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. You should be going out there to do whatever you can to try and get content, but they reward, were rewarded for it, right? And now that they've, you know, taken you guys for granted, not put in the effort as much as they probably should have to try and retain you, metrics are well, well down. They've got away with that because these auction houses are still throwing money at them. These graders are still throwing money at them. These businesses are still throwing money at them. Given what we've seen fanatics dictate and stipulate through tops to these card stores, um, these guys will be very bloody naive to think it's not going to happen to them, the same sort of thing. And um, they'd also be pretty ignorant if they don't think it's going to impact them more than what they are. And that basically means at the end of the day, like I said, you're going to have those two streams, people that, that are either you know, sponsored by fanatics and are going to keep their lips shut out of fear of losing the money or the people that want to get into those shoes and then get that money themselves. So, you know, it is what it is. Keep your sort of stuff front of mind, as I always do say. I'm not telling you what you can and can't do. I'm just saying, make up your own mind. Keep this stuff front of mind and then you'll basically be fine. Listen to everyone. Don't get yourself into an echo chamber. I'm not trying to say to do that. You know, I always basically say be open, honest, and you know, you'll have the most fun within this hobby. This was a, a rant as always. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.